Tell me, tell me, my God, what color you are. Tell me, my God, what is your gender? How can I see my image in your very own? Yes, tell me, my God, what is the hue of love? What is the shade of shared humanity, of dignity, of care for my neighbor? My wounded soul bleeds beating red, and my tears are saline's silent speaking. Tell me what you are again in the whisper of scented pines and stretching oaks, in the brilliant red of cardinals' welcome, welcome song. I wonder, and yet again wonder, can love that is boundless, love that is your infinite divine wisdom, be so easily manacled to color, to gender, to finite, truncating boundaries? Tell me, yet again, I will listen. Good morning. Welcome to Roncesvalles United Church. It's Sunday, February 14th, and it's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's to everybody who's watching today. This coming week is Ash Wednesday. Wednesday is the beginning of our season of Lent. And because we can't be together for an Ash Wednesday service this year, we're going to let you bring Ash Wednesday home. We're going to provide packages of ashes available here at the church, socially distanced, sprayed with our uh, spray, and you're going to be able next Sunday to follow along for the first week of Lent and for the Ash Blessing. We're going to do it as part of our Sunday service next week. So check your email, give the church a call, let us know if you want some ashes, and we'll tell you how to pick them up, and next Sunday you'll be able to do the blessing for yourself. I have a few community announcements to share with you. First of all, we are continuing to honor Black History Month. Today, Anthony's going to share a spectacular piece by Oscar Peterson in honor of this important month. This is also a day for remembering missing and murdered Indigenous women. Linda Pete has kindly offered to read a beautiful prayer to get us started. It's a prayer which is hard to hear, but important to say. And Linda's a member of our Indigenous Relations Group who are doing such good work to help us learn from our Indigenous community and help us live better with them and with ourselves in this world. We're also going to continue our big Bible adventure today. Believe it or not, the Bible in the Old Testament has something to say about missing and Indigenous, murdered Indigenous women. Really? An ancient wisdom book has something to say about that? It absolutely does. So 2 Kings is going to be our illuminating passage that's perfect for this important day. So thank you so much to Linda. She's going to lead us in our opening prayer. This prayer was written for the United Church of Canada to mark a day for remembering missing and murdered Indigenous women. Although it's been modified, it's still a lengthy prayer so only the portions you are to read will be on the screen. You can find the full unabridged text on our website under prayers. Let us pray. Creator, remember your beloved children. Remember the hundreds of missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Remember your beloved children as we remember you. Remember us, Creator, when we come to you with the hope of spring. Seeking love, support, and protection. We know that all children have a right to a home that will love them, a community that will support their needs, and a society that will protect and nurture them. Yet we also know that many Aboriginal children grieve the loss of their homes and aunties. We pray for these children, God. 
remember us, Creator, when we come to you with the passion of summer, seeking guidance on how to address this national tragedy. Help us to better understand the root causes of violence against Aboriginal women. Provide energy and stamina to the faithful people and organizations that are working to seek justice and healing. We pray for these helpers too, God. Remember us, Creator, when we come to you in the mysterious bustle of autumn, seeking comfort and heal for those most affected. Gather the women who have been lost or murdered. May they find peace despite the violence that bound them. Comfort their families and communities. May we find joy in the memories of their loved ones. Despite the sadness in their hearts, we pray for these families. Remember us, Creator, when we come to you in the stillness of winter, seeking wisdom and peace. Restore for us the stories of these women so that their memory and legacy will continue. Keep us restless until we are all able to find peace. We pray for the children, the helpers, the families, and the women who are lost. Throughout the seasons and throughout the years, we join our prayers with theirs. Amen.
about Margaret Vickers. Margaret Vickers, an Indigenous woman born in 1949 on Dolphin Island, off the shore of British Columbia, noted in a recent television interview that the name Margaret means pearl, something that begins with a small agitation and results in treasure. This is how Margaret Vickers has come to view her own life experience. Growing up, all Margaret ever wanted to be was a teacher. When her family moved from their small indigenous settlement to Victoria, Margaret was enrolled in an all-white school and was excited to think that this was her chance to get well prepared for teacher's college. One day, the principal called her into his office. He was holding her government test results. Margaret's scores were very low, and the principal told her that he was going to have to put her into the general learning stream. That meant no university, no teacher's college. Margaret says, I don't know how, but something inside me just wouldn't take no for an answer. I stood in front of this man who meant authority and power to me, and I told him that the tests were unfair. They asked questions that had nothing to do with my experience. I couldn't write a sentence using the word rake because we only ever use seashells to clean our yard. And I couldn't make a paragraph explaining how to build a fence because no one where I grew up had ever seen a fence or a door lock either. We had respect for each other's property. Then she stood, trembling, thinking she wouldn't only miss out on teacher's college, she'd likely be expelled from school altogether. Instead, something miraculous happened, transformative. The principal looked at her, he smiled. He said, thank you for teaching me. We'll help you get through the other examinations you need to get into teacher's college. And I'll write to the ministry about these tests. Margaret Vickers went on to teach school and then to serve in government office, not only here in Canada, but abroad, becoming a sought after resource in community building and the protection of culture. At the beginning of our time together, I said that I was going to be talking about Second Kings, the next installment in our big Bible adventure. And what amazed me as I looked at Second Kings was how this message that's central to this book absolutely lines up with the prayer that Linda read and the story that Mac shared and the day we're having today for remembering Indigenous women who were murdered or lost. It's hard to imagine that such an ancient book speaks to our time today. And yet the book of Second Kings is all about who has a voice, who gets to speak, who has wisdom to share, and are we able to hear it? The central story that I take out of Second Kings is the story of Naaman the general. Naaman, we're told right at the beginning, was favored by God, which was unusual because he was not an Israelite. Naaman was Syrian, and yet his army had crushed the Israelites, which meant to everyone that he was favored by God. If you're powerful, God favors you. It's pretty black and white in the Old Testament. Naaman, however, shortly after this amazing triumph, discovered that he had leprosy. This was the most shameful, the most frightening, and the most deadly disease of the olden world. Naaman would not have been able to tell his family or his companions or a doctor about his leprosy because if he had, he would have immediately been shunned from the community. He did, however, muster up the courage to tell his wife, and she mentioned it to her serving girl. Her serving girl happened to be an Israelite, probably who was captured in the recent battle. And her serving girl went to Naaman, the general, the powerful, someone she should never speak to, and said to him, 
You know, in my land, there is a prophet named Elisha, and he's very wise. And I know if you go to him, he'll be able to help you with your leprosy. Well, Naaman, being a general and being powerful and knowing what he should do and how things should be run, decided after some time, a long time, to finally go to Elijah. Now, I'm saying a long time because Naaman did not listen at the beginning. And then when he finally goes to the prophet, and the prophet says, great, go bathe in the river Jordan seven times and you'll be cured, Naaman doesn't do it. He doesn't listen. He thinks this prophet, this person from this conquered nation, must not be as smart as he is. Surely his own rivers are just as good, if not better. Naaman goes and bathes in his own river and continues to suffer from the increasing leprosy. Naaman's wife points out to him that he should not be so stupid. He should listen to the help that's given him. And finally, Naaman does go and bathe in the River Jordan seven times and is cured. And it seems like such a simple story, doesn't it? But this is absolutely a story about what is powerful, what is useful, what is other, and what is in and out. That really is the story of most of the Old Testament so far. Who is in the grace of God and who is out of the grace of God? Who is part of the group and who is not part of the group? And what we see to this point in the Old Testament, that if you're in God's favor, you get power. And if you're not in God's favor, you get conquered. And those who are in power get to make the rules. Wow. Is that suddenly starting to sound really familiar for our time? Those who are in power get to make the rules. Those who dominate get to choose. Those who seem to hold the seat of government get to decide for everyone else. As I listened to the prayer that Linda led us in today and then to the story that Mac read, I realized how often we simply don't listen. We decide for ourselves who is worth listening to and who isn't. And often the people we listen to are the people that hold worldly power. We listen to the people on the newscasts who show us a particular view of the world because they're on TV. We listen to celebrities who sometimes want to tell us what to purchase. We listen to people who seem to have succeeded in worldly goods. And we don't listen to those who we think have not found a way to power. We don't listen to the bus driver or the grocery store clerk. We don't give a voice to people who seem to have lived in a way that hasn't achieved success in this world, as Naaman had achieved success in this world. I was walking around downtown last week simply because I needed somewhere new to walk around. And I was looking at the statues in the public places. The statues that we have upheld as this is who you want to be and this is who you want to emulate. Because we're a colonial country, the, a lot of those statues are related to wars that we have succeeded in. And a lot of those statues are about war heroes. Now certainly we want to honor the people who serve our country, but the idea of these statues is kind of a Winston Churchill on a big horse, which I saw in London. This is what power looks like. This is what success looks like. And on that walk I wondered, where is the statue to the mother who takes her kids to daycare on the bus at 8 in the morning or 7 in the morning? Where is the statue to the person who works in the food bank for no money? because they know it matters. Where is the statue to the person who life has so harmed and so hurt that they believe themselves lesser and yet they still have a story to tell which we need to hear? Where are the other views of life that matter and that teach us and that we want to hear? It led me right back to the uh, stories we heard in the Truth and Reconciliation sessions not so long ago. These were not voices that we normally give space to, or power to, or heed to. These were voices from people who are used to being unobserved and unappreciated and not valued. And yet in story after story, I heard of such love, such resilience, such power 
inside that came from people who had been told that they simply didn't matter and that their voice should be silenced. That is what I hold on to as I reflect on this day when we remember the missing and murdered Indigenous women. When we lose a single voice, when we discount a single experience, when we devalue a certain person, this world loses out. Not every person with no power will be like Margaret Vickers, will find the strength inside them to stand up to the face of power. But those of us who have some privilege can and should, and we should help others who don't have that access to do the same. We should be thinking about who have we considered other as lesser? What other voices do we need to hear? I want to hear the story of the person who comes to us to pick up a meal on Sunday. They are people of remarkable resilience that our society has disregarded and harmed and who have been lost. I want to hear the story of the grocery store clerk, even if it's just to wish her a happy day and know that she is suffering to keep up with demand and maybe worrying about being sick. I want to hear the stories from the people whose voices are not front and center, presented loudest, told us are important. I want to hear the story of voices of people who simply believe that in their story they have something to share. I want to hear the voices of people who don't believe that and who do have something to share. Naaman's story is interesting because at the beginning of 2 Kings, Israel is sure that this is their time of power, their time of being heard. The temple has been built and Solomon is reigning as a mighty king. And that by the end of 2 Kings, that same temple will be lying in rubble, desecrated and destroyed by the Babylonians, and the intelligentsia of Israel will have been carried off into captivity. The power of this world passes. Real power comes from understanding that when we consider anyone lesser or other, when we allow anyone's experience or life or potential to be lost, we all of us are lesser. Our humanity is lesser. Our whole is lesser. The voices of the women who are lost still ring out through the stories told by the people who love them. Those are stories that we want to hear, corrections that we want to make, people that we want to include. For them, for sure. For us, for certain. Because as the story of Naaman tells us, the voices of the Margaret Vickers in the world need to be supported and heard. The servant girls, the wives, the people that we have not yet listened to. They may just be pointing us the way that we need to go and helping us as, he helped me, as they help Naaman to heal. Thanks be to God. Perhaps you sometimes feel as I do when I hear these words, COVID, case numbers, isolate, lockdown, business losses, vaccines. It's monotonous, frustrating, and depressing. But that doesn't mean that my hope for an end to the pandemic and my regret for all that has been wrought on individuals and communities is lessened. This week I found a prayer in a 10-year-old resource. I want to read it because it seems appropriate for today, Valentine's Day, Black History Month, and this day of remembrance for murdered and Indigenous women. God of love and life, hear our prayer for renewed ways of heart and mind. For we seek a faith bold in its authenticity, generous in its practice, and always deepening at its heart. God of love and life, hear our prayer. For a renewal of hope and action. For we seek a faith that longs for shared futures, is reconciling in its expression, and always deepening in its heart. God of love and life, hear our prayer for our renewing of trust and compassion for we seek a faith willing to co-suffer and heal tenacious in its desire for justice and always deepening in its heart 
We pray for these people who need support and good care. Albert, Vaughn, Annie, Ruby, Dennis, Sammy, and these people in care, Caroline, Mary, AJ. Today we are thankful for those who love us, family and friends. May we show love, kindness, regard and concern, goodwill and benevolence whenever there is an opportunity or a need. We are not alone. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Roncesvalles United Church. And please do email us, Facebook us, or give us a call if you'd like us to provide you with ashes sometime later this week so that next Sunday as you watch our recording, you can do the ash blessing along with me. And we're going to start Lent at the same time. And now, go out into the world, go with a daring and a tender faith, knowing that the world is waiting for you. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and guide Jesus Christ, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide upon us, each one, now and forever. Amen. Stay safe, everyone.